When it comes to internet speed and accessibility, Maine ranks among the worst in the country. That's not just a problem for someone trying to stream a movie. It is a massive roadblock for Maine's economy. But it is a fixable problem if Maine works to expand broadband access. New Senator Samantha York did some digging to find out what it's going to take for Maine to get its act together. Sam? Yeah, guys, think about it. How many times do you scroll through Facebook, check your email, order something online? We're pretty much always connected. So imagine losing that access to high speed internet. Well, that's tough for a lot of people across Maine because they've never had it and it's preventing them from thriving. In a mostly quiet downtown Millinocket lie businesses bustling with potential. Change this number out. Smack dab in the middle are entrepreneurs John Hafford and Jessica Massey. The Aroostook County natives own Design Lab, a graphic design and marketing firm. We spent some time outside of the state. They lived and worked away, but came home to Maine for a reason many will relate to. As we, you know, got older and wanted to start a family, we wanted to make sure that we had our roots here in Maine. They made that work one reason and one reason only access to high-speed internet. We definitely consider ourselves part of the digital economy because the majority of the work that we do, we do online. Since opening its doors in 2004, Design Lab has tripled in size, with 2018 being its most successful year to date. But getting there happened at dial-up speeds, literally. It was a real challenge for him to send files, to communicate with clients with that kind of internet connection. That challenge is what forced them to get creative. We put the video onto a portable hard drive, bring it over to Sear bus line at the Irving station, put it on a bus, give the Whoa. bus driver $10 and <laughs> give, give this to Eric and Presque Isle. <laughs> You heard right. When they couldn't upload files digitally to their clients, they would send a hard drive by bus. God forbid there was some kind of error because then it, the process would have to start all over again. But that all changed in 2016 when the pair decided it was time to invest in Maine's broadband infrastructure. It was completed back in 2012, becoming the foundation for high-speed internet access. The hope? attracting businesses to the state and bringing better access to rural communities. It's phenomenal how quickly our business has evolved since getting broadband. However, just 10 miles down the road, a different story. The New England Outdoor Center is a woodsy retreat for weekend getaways. We have a few guests that show up and say, thank God my phone doesn't work <laughs> and thank God I can't get online. Right. But they're an exception. The center's president, Matt Polstein, says his business has no direct access to broadband. And the cost to get connected is upwards of $100,000. We currently operate with wireless internet from a tower on a ridge behind us that is beamed right straight into our building. And when it works, it works well, but when it doesn't work, it doesn't work at all. Which means his business goes off the grid because every key part of the center, like its phone system and the system that processes transactions, stops working entirely. The alternative really isn't adequate for where we are or um, where we want to grow to be. It's a, a real economic um, development issue. People make choices about where to go and you know, not just for work, but for vacation and the work they might do while on vacation based on their ability to communicate. And, and we're, we're on the wrong side of the digital divide right now. Much of Maine is on the wrong side, and Maine lawmakers know it. It's a real issue for Maine, and it's a huge economic issue. Senator Angus King is among a handful of other U.S. senators that created the Rural Broadband Caucus. He says without it, developing an economy in today's world is nearly impossible. That could be a big deal for Maine, when Amazon may not want to build a big building somewhere, but they want to hire two or three hundred people. They could be scattered all over rural Maine if there's good broadband. If there's not good broadband, forget it. Part of the problem? Mainers not seeing the value broadband can bring to the economy in daily lives, from employment opportunities to keeping loved ones home longer using telemedicine, where patients can use technology to receive care right from their home. How do we help people use it? As Maine's Commissioner of Economic Development, Heather Johnson is working on answering that question. Rolling out the infrastructure is just one piece, right? How people use it effectively and add value to you know, economic growth into their lives or healthcare or other choices really is about how you use it, not does it exist. 
She says Governor Janet Mills has made broadband infrastructure a priority for Maine, rolling out a five-year plan that would expand access throughout the entire state. We can attract the workforce and grow the workforce in a way that we need to. Back in Millinocket, Massey and Polstein say the sooner Mainers catch on to the importance of quality internet, the faster Maine will make it onto the 21st century map. I think of it as basic infrastructure. You need roads to, to get to other places and with broadband, that's basic infrastructure to connect with the world. It will allow people to live where they wanna live and work wherever. It makes me hopeful for rural Maine. So that broadband infrastructure, it's called the three ring binder. Why? Because it loops around the entire state in three big rings. So the access is there. It's just a matter of finding an efficient way to get people connected. So if you're curious or want to see more about what it would take, you can head to our website or mobile app.